Yes YouTube and welcome back to another Match of the Day magazine video. In today's magazine we've got UCL stars to watch, we've got Spot the Ball, we've got Puma, Boot Drop, we've got Prem Primary Lols and the new World Cup ball. We've also got a debate on who's the world's number one striker. This will be an amazing debate about five strikers in the world. It's going to be a very hard one as we've got amazing strikers balling out for different clubs in different leagues and scoring lots of goals, like 30 to 40 goals, like Benzema or Ronaldo. We've also got the new 90 second quiz. So we basically are doing a quiz that we need to do under 90 seconds and try and get all of them right. Before we get into the video, could you please leave a like and subscribe and share so you could push this video out to new viewers that have never seen my videos before. I'd really appreciate that, guys. And I've also got a series where I'm reviewing World Cup footballs from 1930 to present day. And the 2022 football has actually come out in Qatar. The Ferradil 102 ball is coming out soon, so stay tuned, look on my channel, and one day will be there, that amazing video of the Ferradil 102 1934 ball. Without further ado, let's get into the video with the packs. Now we're starting off with an AS Roma midfielder, and we've got mega value Henrik Mkhitaryan, the best Armenian footballer of all time. Armenia never get into any competitions and Henrik Mkhitaryan is by far their best player of all time. Playing for Roma under Jose Mourinho, the dark art master. Henrik Mkhitaryan, again, a very good player. In his Arsenal days, he was a baller. Right now, he's 34 years old, in the Serie A, still balling out, but not playing every single minute on that pitch. He's been given 60 defence and 78 attack. A PSG defender. Oof, nice one. Akrah Hakimi, the Moroccan right back. By far one of the best full backs in the modern game. Yeah, Yao Cancelo is the best left back in the world. Trent is probably the best right back in the world. Hakimi though, following just behind him. Rapid player. He attacks more than actually defending, and that's the problem with PSG. Hakimi always attacks, doesn't really defend as much. Juan Bernat on the left wing back row, he goes up and down, mostly defends. Hakimi though, great attacking player. He cuts the ball inside, goes to the byline, puts a ball to Messi, Neymar, even Danilo Pereiro and Mbappe. He's been given 89 defence and 75 attack. Borussia Dortmund goalkeeper, Gregor Kobel. Rum Berkey's past, past it right now. He can't play for Borussia Dortmund. He's not good enough, in my opinion. Kobel, though, fresh blood from Stuttgart, the team that I think nearly got relegated, might be still in the Bundesliga. Kobel, though, signed from Stuttgart to Dortmund for about £23 million. Big, hefty price tag for the 23 year old but he's doing very well for the yellow wall I mean as a youngster he's growing he's playing better every single game he's six foot six so he's absolutely massive great keeper that's what Dortmund need but not enough for the Champions League or the Europa League he's been given 76 defense and free attack and by the way Dortmund got knocked out by the mighty Glasgow Rangers. Atalanta defender, Davide Zappacosta. On loan from Chelsea, he went to Roma, went back to Chelsea. And now they've loaned him out to Atalanta. Then he's going to go back to Chelsea and get loaned out again. That's the thing with Chelsea. They always loan players out that just don't fit in a team. And zappacosta has been like that for a few years since he signed. He did score that amazing goal, I believe, against Roma. That volley in the top corner was absolutely superb. 2017. But now, just not playing for Atlanta. Not even getting on the reserves. He's 28 years old. 29. Dirty. 
getting older and not doing well because he's not playing games. Maybe he needs to go back to another club in the Serie A, maybe go back to Roma. He's been given 75 defence, 63 attack. A Man City defender as the last card, Oleksandr Zinchenko. Amid the things happening in Ukraine, Zinchenko, amazing left back. Uh, very sad though that his family's in Ukraine struggling because of the war. But let's not talk about that because it's football. Oleksandr Zinchenko, quality fullback, 22 years old. But obviously, Al Cancelo's going to play above him. Better left back. I mean, one of the, well, the best left back in the world currently. Right back, you got Kyle Walker. Again, amazing right back. Zinchenko is just always on the bench, just a back up to left back, sometimes right back as well. It's been given 74 defence, 63 attack. Now we have got the second back. Start from the front. And the Leicester defender, Kaglasa Youngsu. Now, in the Euros, everyone thought that Turkey would be the dark horses. They had some great players. Even I thought they would have had a decent tournament. But they got knocked out. Fourth place in their group. And they never won a game. So that's pretty shocking. With the team they had, it was a decent team. Kaglasa Yunsu playing for Leicester. Leicester are underperforming. From being fifth place to now being 10th or 11th. I mean, Leicester, again, good team, but I think it's because Jamie Vardy isn't playing now at his age. He's assisting more than scoring because he's 36 years old now. Um, we're going to see him go one day, which is going to be sad because what a player Jamie Vardy is. So Yunsu, though, very strong Turkish centre-back. Uh, very young as well, 24 years old. And he's been given 73 defence and 40 attack. Uh, midfielder for Wolfsburg, Riddle Baku. I think I remember where he got a red card for when Wolfsburg were about 1 0 down against Hoffenheim, and Baku had a terrible tackle from behind. Uh, just tactical foul because it would have made it 2 0 in the 90th minute because the goalkeeper was up. Got a red card for that. But Baku's a right mid, right midfielder, right wing back, and very quick player. Wolfsburg have Lacroix, the centre-back French. Uh, they've got, well, they used to have Weghorst, who's now went to Burnley, surprisingly. Wolfsburg, great team in the Bundesliga. Sixth place, fifth place. In the Europa League spots, Conference League spots. Baku, though, very quick player, like I said. Doesn't really defend well, but attacking-wise, he's a superb fullback. He's been given 77 defence, 64 attack. A Leipzig midfielder, and we have got the American Tyler Adams, central defensive midfielder. Now, America as a country, with players, they've actually got some decent players that they've brought up. Tyler Adams, Sergio Dest, Giovanni Reina, Christian Pulisic for their team is good. Yeah, America's got some decent players that brought up. Still very young. Tyler Adams, 21 years old, playing for Leipzig. Not under Jesse Marsh, because he has went to Leeds United. Under a new manager, but Leipzig always perform well in the Bundesliga. Also in the Champions League, but they got knocked out in the round of 16. He's been given 74 defence, 49 attack. We have got a Borussia Dortmund defender, Rafael Guerrero. All round play for me. He can attack, he can defend, he could do the lot. He could play left mid, but really he plays left back. He could play left wing as well. All round player, really. Dortmund, though, on the other side, just in Europe, they don't seem to perform well. Got knocked out in the Europa League. By Rangers. Rangers in the finals. No, semi-finals now, I believe. Yeah, semi-finals. They've got a tough game. 
Dortmund got knocked out in the quarter-finals by Glasgow Rangers. Good team, though. They've got lots of great individuals like Haaland, Guerrero. They've got Cobel. They've got some decent centre-backs with Akanji, Hummels. They've got a decent team, just need to improve it more in the summer. They've also got Marco Royce, who is a baller. Guerrero's been given 80 defence, 74 attack. And the last player is a defender from Leicester, and it's man of the match, Ricardo Pereira. He's come in clutch for Leicester a lot of times this season. His defensive work, his attacking work, and he links up the play perfectly. He plays one-twos with the midfielders and crosses the ball into the box. Sometimes crosses it in from deep. But, I mean, when you've got players like Ian Acho in the box, he will finish it. And Vardy, when he occasionally plays. Ricardo Pereira as well for the Portuguese national team. He's their starting right back. Cancelo on the left side and Pereira on the right side. Very underrated team, Leicester. Got the likes of Ndidi, Pereira, Schmeichel. Siyunsu's a bit overrated, in my opinion. James Madison. Great team they've got, but they just need to fight more. And they will get more trophies, like they did in the FA Cup. And they'll get a nice place in the Premier League. Doesn't seem they're going to get Conference League or Europa League this season. Cara Pereira's been given 86 defence and 68 attack. All of the cards. Hype. Barca are back. Yes, readers, we're not going to lie. We're feeling pretty pumped about Barcelona's hot form right now. Let's be honest, they were trash at the start of the season, but since ex-player Xavi took charge in November, they've scored more than 35 goals and lost only once. They're back with a boom. Make that twice because they lost 3-2 against Frankfurt. Barca Barbershop, with your stylist Adam Lalama. Today's look, the Ronaldinho, Memphis Pie, Danny Alves and Pedri. Mm, nice. Pedri looks decent. How they've done it. 1. New players equals fresh vibe. Sweet deals Barca signed three Prem players in January. A Bamiyang, Ferran Torres and Adama Traore. 2. Big techie wins. Too good. Barca beat rivals Real Madrid 4-0 recently. 3. Tactical switch-up. Tiki Taka. Xavi has brought back possession-based play. Jake says, Barcelona are still some way off the top of La Liga after their slow start, but they'll be challenging again next season. My hype rating, how highly do you rate Barca? Out of 10? Maybe a 9. I really like their team and how they've been playing recently with Xavi. Very inexperienced manager, but... With the team, I think it was Al Alai in Qatar or Dubai. Yeah, Xavi brought Tiki Taka there and they were top of their league until he left. Hype. The coolest things in footy right now. World Cup 2022, start date 21st of November. World Cup, Loden. When Kylian Mbappe lifted the World Cup aloft for France back in 2018, we were mad sad that we'd have to wait another four years for another tournament. But it's finally around the corner. Check out the awesome groups for this November's tournament. How buzzed are you for the World Cup, my hyper rating? 100 out of 10. Really want England to win once again. The draw. I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm going to predict who's going to get out of each group. So the draw group here, we've got Qatar. Ecuador, Senegal and the Netherlands. Obviously, Netherlands, first place, got a very good team on their hands. Sometimes they underperform, but when they've got Frankie de Jong, Virgil van Dijk, they've got Memphis Depay, got lots of great youngsters as well. The keeper is probably the problem. They've got Sillerson, they've got some other... Decent keeps like Bizot, plus for PSV. But they will comfortably get out of this group. But they've got Senegal in second. With them, it will be a hard one. Because Senegal 
winning the AFCON and getting to the World Cup, of course, great achievement for them. Sadio Mane in the World Cup, Edouard Mendy in the World Cup, superb. Lots of great players have got, lots of players that in the AFCON, lots of people have noticed and say, this guy, we need him in our team. I think it was Sangare, I think he played for Senegal, I think he was from PSV. Strong team Senegal, they will definitely get through this group. Between Ecuador and the host Qatar, I think Ecuador will go third, Qatar and fourth. I mean, Qatar can surprise everyone, but I don't think it's going to happen this year for them. Ecuador, on the other hand, they've got some great youngsters like Estupinian, plays for Villarreal. Got some other great players. If Antonio Valencia was there, would have been amazing. But he is retired, 30, 39 years old, and he's retired right now. But yeah, that's the first group in order. One, two, three, four. Netherlands, Senegal, Ecuador and Qatar. Group B, England, Iran, USA and Team 1. So, Team 1 is Scotland, Ukraine and Wales. So, here I think Scotland will make it through. Put Scotland in there. I think Scotland will make that through. My prediction England, Iran, USA and Scotland, who I think will get through the qualifiers. Obviously England first. Such a strong team. On the Gareth Southgate, there's been highs, there's been lows. In the World Cup semi-finals against Croatia in 2018, that was heartbreaking for all England fans. Lost against Croatia, believe in extra time, and that's the worst way to lose a game. This year, we've got Lots of youngsters, we've developed players like Harry Kane, we've got Trent now, we've got Joe Gomez, who probably won't play, definitely not Harry Maguire in there. But we've got Ben Chilwell, who will be back for this tournament, Rhys James, Aaron Ramsdale, who has a shout of getting in, but obviously Jordan Pickford will be there, probably Nick Pope, Raheem Sterling for sure, Jack Grealish, possibly, Phil Foden, Mason Mount. Obviously, Declan Rice, because he has been a star performer. James Ward-Prowse, great at free kicks. Probably going to get into the team as well. But I think England will win it this season. This season, this World Cup. That's what I think. And hopefully it happens. It's a hard one between the USA and Scotland. I'm going to edge... I'm going to edge Scotland in second, USA in third, and Iran in fourth. The reason I think Scotland will get through, they've been showing great, great performances in international breaks. And I think they'll keep this going. I mean, Scottish teams like Rangers are doing very well. Celtic in the league are doing superb. Aberdeen in third, close behind. Scotland, such great players, are developing amazing youngsters. USA in third, well, they've got the quality, but I don't think they'll get through. I think they'll just about miss out to Scotland. And Iran, I'm sorry, but I think you'll come forth. Group C, Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Mexico and Poland. Now this, for me, is a hard one. Obviously, Argentina first. Messi's last World Cup. Saudi Arabia fourth. But it's between Mexico and Poland. And I'm going to predict Poland just about get through. I think Poland with Robert Lewandowski will just about get into the World Cup round of 16. Mexico, though, the quality they have... It'll be a very close World Cup Group C draw. Group D, we've got France, Team 2, who is either the UAE, Australia or Peru. And I think Peru could have a shout. But I think, well, Australia in the end. So France, Australia, Denmark or Tunisia. I'm going to have a shock here. Denmark in first... France in second, Australia in third, Tunisia in fourth. Again, Denmark have lots of quality. Christian Eriksen, his career is back to the top. 
signed from Inter Milan to Brentford and he's balling out for Brentford who are surviving relegation for sure and they're not going back to the championship for a few seasons. Australia, I mean, it's going to be a hard group for them when they've got France and you've got Denmark. Two superb teams who I think will get through to the round of 16. Group E, this is a group of death. Spain, uh, team three, so Costa Rica or New Zealand, which I think Costa Rica will get through. But Germany and Japan, this is definitely, for me, the group of death. Um, Spain first. And I'm sorry for all those Germans out there, but I'm going to go for the biggest shock ever. Japan in second. Germany in third and Costa Rica in fourth. I know you'll be cancelling me for this, but... I think it's going to happen two times in a row. Germany just seem a bit weak at times. Spain, of course, superb team. Performing well, great players, great manager in Luis Enrique. Costa Rica, they've got Kalo Navas, blast just about all. Germany, though, Havertz is scoring for them. Werner's even scoring for them. Muller and Royce are performing very well. But I think it's just a defence. Neuer, nothing to do with Neuer, but the defence is just a bit shaky. Japan, I don't know, but I just have a feeling that Japan will get through, surprisingly. Group F, Belgium, Canada, Morocco and Croatia. Well, we'll start off with Canada in fourth, even though it's a very hard one. Obviously Belgium in first, but it's Morocco, Croatia. Oh, this is a very hard one. So, Belgium first. I'm going to get... Morocco second, Croatia third. Might regret that. But Morocco, I've got so many great players, like Akraf Hakimi. They've got Bonu from Sevilla. I mean, they've got N Nezri as well, Hakim Ziyech, but I don't think he wants to play in the national team. Maserawi probably doesn't want to play because of something with the manager. But I still believe in Morocco to get through. But if Maserawi and Hakim Ziyech's not going to play, then I must change them to third. And then Croatia to second. So Croatia in second. Yeah, Croatia, not as good as they were in 2018. But again, they've brought up amazing youngsters like Josko Gvardiol. He plays for Leipzig. One day he'll be a superb centre-back. Group G, another kind of hard one. Brazil, Serbia, Switzerland and Cameroon. Cameroon as well, decent team. Tokoy Kambi, Onana, who'll get to play in this World Cup. And then Switzerland is Switzerland, amazing team. Serbia have got a 30, well, 41 goal Mitrovic in the championship. Brazil first, Switzerland second, Serbia third and Cameroon in fourth. I really love Switzerland's team. Jan Sommer in goal, El Vedi and Akanji and Denis Zakaria, who's I think at loan at Juventus. Most of them is just a Bundesliga team overall. Shakiri, who's playing for Lyon at the moment. Brazil, obviously, you've got the skill, the five-star skills. You've got the Neymars. You've got the Richarlisons. You've got the Gabriel Jesus, Rodrigo's, and Vinicius Juniors. And in the midfield, you've got the likes of Fabinho, Casemiro, maybe even Oscar, Edison, Alisson. Marquinhos, lots of superb players. Thiago Silva will probably get to play in this World Cup as well. Cameroon, I mean, it's a very hard group for them. I think they will come forth, but good that they actually have got to the World Cup. Great achievement for a, for a country like Cameroon. Group H, Portugal, Ghana, Uruguay and South Korea. Ghana want to get their revenge on Uruguay, I believe it was in the qualifiers. And if Ghana scored that goal, they would have got through to the World Cup. But Suarez handballed it. Red card for Suarez. 
They got a penalty, off the bar, missed it, out of the World Cup. They're not going to it. Uruguay are, though. But Ghana could get revenge on Uruguay, and Suarez is going to be playing for Uruguay. Revenge is sweet karma. Portugal first, Uruguay second. Ghana third and South Korea fourth. Yes, yeah, South Korea have got Son, Huang Hee Chan, and they did knock out Germany. But this see this World Cup, they might kind of struggle in it. Ghana, I think they'll be fighting for absolutely everything in this group. They've got well, the only player I know is Asamawa, the wing back, left back. Uruguay though just got lots of quality. Federico Valverde. Pinging the balls, playing a box-to-box -box midfielder role. Learn from the likes of Modric, Tony Cruz. Portugal are as better as ever, really. Maybe when 1998 they were superb then as well. But when you've got Ronaldo, Diaz, Bernardo Silva, Cancelo, Ricardo Pereira, it's just a very hard team to face and a very hard team to play. And there are all the groups. I think England will win the World Cup. Just because I'm English, it's a bit superstitious and a bit, like, biased, but I think England will win it. Euro 2022, loading. Euro 2022, start date 6th of July. The Netherlands are the current holders after their win in 2017. The Men's World Cup isn't the only international tourney we're hyped for this year, with the women's Euros now less than 100 days away. And the best thing is hosted in England with the final taking place at Wembley Stadium. Boom. The holders, Netherlands, the home nations, England, Northern Ireland, and the favourites, España. Raheem Sterling, Man City. Manchester City have been knocked out of the FA Cup 3-2 by Liverpool. Zach Steffen starting as Edison's injured. Kim De Bruyne also injured. If both of them players were there, big game players. And they probably would have won that game, got to the final. Mm, but Sterling, great player, played very well against Liverpool both times. They got very unlucky. Zach Steffen made the same mistake Edison made, made against Liverpool not long ago. Edison got the ball and he like went across his goal, but very weird control. And Diogo Jota slided and nearly got the ball of him. Zach Steffen did the same thing. Sadio Mane this time slided, put it in the back of the net. But these mistakes happen to goalkeepers. Edouard Mendy did it against... Real Madrid 3-1, Benzema just put it in the back of the net where you just try to pass it to Rudiger, but not enough weight on the pass. Raheem Sterling, a quality player, quality forward, doesn't get the recognition he needs and for England this year in the World Cup, I think he'll be one of the star performers. Former clubs, Machi's players are the club they left in January transfer moves. One point for his correct answer. One, Jean-Philippe Mateta. There's two, Louis Diaz. Three, Bruno Gunnar Four, Philippe Coutinho. Five, Nathan Patterson. Six, Kieran Trippier. Seven, Walt Weghorst. And eight, Rodrigo Benson Coe. The clubs, A, Lyon. B, Rangers. C, Barcelona. D, Wolfsburg. E, Atletico Madrid. F, Mainz. G, Porto, H, Juve. Jean-Philippe Mateta, number one. He came from Mainz, so F, one F. Louis Diaz came from Porto, G, two G. Three, Bruno Gunamares. Leon, A, three A. Four, Felipe Coutinho. Barcelona, 4C. 5, Nathan Patterson, Rangers. 5B, oh. 
Six Kieran Trippier, Atletico Madrid. Six E. Seven Walt Weghorst, D Wolfsburg. Seven D. Eight Rodrigo Bentancur, Juventus. Eight H. The answers one is F, two is G, three is A, four is C, five is B, six is E, seven is D, and eight is H. Eight out of eight. So I've got the genius one, which is very nice, top level. Vamos Luis Diaz, Liverpool. Superb sign from Liverpool. From Porto, he performed very well, scoring 14 goals. I uh, believe he got 18 assists, and that adds up to 32 uh, goals and assists involvements. Louis Diaz, superb player. Great skill, great ability on the ball. Maybe not strengthy enough, but he can work on that. He's got the flair, the Colombian flair, not Brazilian flair. But he's, he acts like he's a Brazilian with a flair, the Ronaldinho flair, the skill, the great goals. He scored amazing goals for Liverpool already. He's just a great player. When Sa Sadio Mane or Mohamed Salah leave, Luis Diaz will replace any one of them. And he's got the ability. He's only 24 years old. James Ward-Prowse, Southampton. I was talking about this guy earlier. This guy could get called up to the England national team for the World Cup 2022. I think he definitely will. With his free kicks, his captaincy, his leadership, his passing ability, it's a no-brainer for me. Put him in that England squad. When he takes a free kick, everyone should be scared. Nearly every single free kick he takes, it's a goal. Every free kick he takes turns to gold. Different, uh, literally, he's superb with that. Who is the world's best striker? There's some seriously on flames finishers out there right now. Here, MOTD Mag ranks the best and out and out frontmen in world footy. Erling Haaland, the striker who just keeps getting better. Erling's boot, Mike Mercurial Vapor. XIV Dream Speed. We'll do something different here. We'll rate the boot out of 10. Very nice boot design. I like the colours, the panels. But the front is alright as well. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. The numbers. Club, 193 games, 149 goals. But if it wasn't for injury, it would have been more. Country, 17 games, 15 goals. Iconic moment, Haaland stepped out on the European scene, hitting a first half hat-trick for Salzburg on his Champions League debut. Haaland in emojis, the muscle emoji, the fire emoji and the bee emoji. The Haaland goal. Erling's goal simple, he bulldozes straight through defences, sprinting with such power before smashing the ball as hard as he can past the keeper. Haaland is the best because he can't stop scoring. Erling is still super young, but he's been an unstoppable goal scorer in Norway, in Austria, Germany and Europe. Haaland turns less than half chances into goals at an incredible rate. Fact file, full name Erling Braut Haaland, born on the 21st of July 2000, age 21. Club Borussia Dortmund, country Norway, position striker, preferred foot left. MOTV ratings, finishing 89. Speed 87, Power 88, Stamina 75 and Strength 85. MOTD Verdict, 4th, Best Striker. Your Verdict, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th or 5th. Well, I need to kind of cheat and see which strikers are here. So we've got Harry Kane, Lewandowski, Ronaldo and Benzema. That is a hard one. I'm going to agree and say fourth. And I'm sorry for who's going to be fifth. Erlen Haaland fourth. Without injuries, he would definitely be a superb striker. He is, but without the injuries, he'd be even better. 
He's a machine. He's a robot. Harry Kane, the striker who always finishes strong. Harry's boot, Nike Phantom GT Elite 2. Out of 10. I love this boot. 9 out of 10. The numbers. Club. 437 games and 259 goals. Country. 69 games, 49 goals. Iconic moment. Nothing tops Harry's header at the Euros against Germany. Sealing that 2-0 win sent England into massive limbs. Canaan emojis, the line emoji, the star emoji and the rocket emoji. The cane goal. Harry loves to take the ball in his stride. Create space of a turn or shimmy before arrowing the ball directly into one of the far corners of a clean, hard strike. Kane is the best because he's kept banging in the goals in Europe's top league for so many seasons. Kane's consistency is phenomenal, especially when you add in his all-round game and the fact Spurs aren't always playing that well. MOTD ratings. Finishing 92, speed 75, power 89, stamina 80, strength 86. MOTD verdict, second best striker. Your verdict, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Third, for me. Robert Lewandowski, you know, Lewandowski. The striker who breaks record after record. Robert's boot, Mike Mercurial Vapor 14, out of 10. Again, it's kind of the same boot as Erling Haaland's. It probably is, but 8, because I like the colour. The numbers, club, 667 games, 404 goals. Country, 129 games and 75 goals. Iconic moment. Bayern were losing 1-0 against Wolfsburg before Leroy came off the bench and scored 5 in 9 minutes. Lewandowski and emojis, like the target emoji, 100 emoji and the applause emoji. The Leroy goal. Bobby's a snapshooter, meaning basically he sneaks around the box waiting for the ball to drop calmly before giving the keeper no chance. He's a terror. Lewandowski's the best because... There's no number nine in the world for you that can match his numbers. Lewa is a goal machine, making the most of the chances his techie teammates set up. In the box, with the ball, at his feet, there's only one outcome. And I forgot the fact file. I'll do Harry Kane's quickly. Full name, Harry Edward Kane, born the 28th of July, 1993, age 28. Club Tottenham, country England, position striker, preferred foot, right. Now back to Lewandowski. Fact file. Full name, Robert Lewandowski, born on the 21st of August, 1988, age 33, club Bayern Munich, country Poland, position striker, preferred foot, right. MOTD ratings, finishing, 95, speed, 76, power, 90, stamina, 82, strength, 88. MOTD verdict, first best striker, my verdict, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Definitely the best striker in the world at the moment. I think he scored about 55 goals this season. Last season, same thing. The season before that, same thing. He just can't stop scoring about 50 goals every single season. What a striker. Kareem Benzema, the striker who keeps stepping up. Kareem's boot. Adidas X speed flow point one. Out of 10, this is the best boot I've ever seen. 10 out of 10. The numbers, club, 741 games, 377 goals. Country, 94 games, 36 goals. And I'm basing this of this season, by the way. So this is why I've put Harry Kane third. Iconic moment, Ben scored a massive hattie in this year's Champions League league helping his side beat a stacked PSG side 3-1. Benzema emojis, King, the shocked face and fireball emoji. The Benzema goal. King Kareem can score from anywhere, but he's brilliant at controlling the ball, swiveling away from defenders and finessing from range into the far corner. 
Benzema is the best because he's gone from playing in Cristiano Ronaldo's shadow to inspiring Real Madrid to the Liga dominance. Benz is an all-round striker, holding up the ball to help create chances and then bagging all types of goals. Fact file, full name. Karim Mostata Benzema, born on 19th of December 1987, aged 84, Club Real Madrid, Country France, position striker, preferred foot right. MOTD ratings, finishing 90, speed 74, power 80, stamina 81 and 86 strength. MOTD verdict, third, best striker. Your verdict, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. This season, for me, second. And Cristiano Ronaldo, you know where he's going this season, I'm sorry. The striker who is a born winner. Ronnie's boot, Mike Mercurial Superfly, VIII, Elite Dream Speed 5. Out of 10, big fan of this boot, 10. The numbers, club, 927 games, 692 goals. Country, 186 games, 115 goals. Iconic moment, scoring in the UCL final is amazing, but his bicycle kick against Juve in the UCL quarters in 2018 was insane. Ronaldo in emojis, goat, star and trophy winner emoji. The Ronaldo goal. The iconic image of CR7 is him leaping like a salmon, towering over the fenders of his in Spain spring and powering in an unstoppable head of home. Ronaldo's the best because nobody's ever scored goals like CR7. He's broken pretty much every score and record he can for both club and country. Fired his teams to pretty much every title available and he's still going strong even at his age. Fact file, full name. Cristiano Ronaldo dos Santos Aviero, born on 5th of February 1985, aged 37, Club Man United, Country Portugal, position striker, preferred foot right. MOTD ratings, finishing 88, speed 80, power 85, stamina 71 and strength 84. MOTD verdict, 5th, last place, best striker. My verdict, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. 5th. Not because I don't like Cristiano Ronaldo, but this, se this season compared to the likes of Benzema, Kane, and who was the other one? What, Benzema, Kane, Lewer and Haaland. Compared to them this season, Ronaldo hasn't been at his best, but he's still scored about 21 goals. Got that hat-trick against Norwich City. Superb. Two posters here. The GOAT, the cycling GK, Ben Foster, Watford. We all like Ben Foster. Mostly because of his YouTube channel, the cycling GK, where he basically has a GoPro and he just vlogs about what he does as a footballer for Watford, a goalkeeper. But I hope he gets relegated back to the Championship because I want to see the GoPro in the goal. He's not allowed that in the Premier League, which I don't know why. But when he's back in the Championship one day... The GoPro will be back in the goal again and we'll get to see some amazing gameplay. Ben Foster, apparently, with ratings wise, is one of the worst goalkeepers in the Premier League with record, with like saving clean sheets. But Watford are nearly bottom half in the Premier League, which isn't great. Roy Hodgson, the 73 year old manager, came out of retirement for this club. Another one, Marco Royce, Borussia Dortmund, and he's the captain, the skipper for the Yellow Wall, Borussia Dortmund. They're number 11, they're number 10. Plays in that camp spot, could play on the wings, he could play centre mid. Very good player, but if it wasn't for his injuries, once again, he would have been one of the best number 10s in the world. Not ever, but probably in the world, if it wasn't for injuries. He was superb back in his day without the injuries. Still all right now, but I think he needs to move. Exclusive interview with Luke Shaw. England's ledge left back talks Paul Pogba playing Uno in his World Cup hopes. And he says, we believe that we can win the World Cup. Come on, Luke. Fact file. Full name. Luke Paul Hoa Shaw. Born on the 12th of July 1995, aged 26, 
Club Man United, Country England, position left back, preferred foot left. Role model, Luke looks up in former England man, Ashley. Yes Luke, tell us, who's your best mate in the England squad? Luke says, everyone here is so close, there's a good vibe. I get really well with Ollie Watkins, he's a good lad and really funny. Since the Euros, I've been close with my mates and deck, though. We have a good laugh, and the brilliant characters, but I can't ruin their little duo, so I'd say Ollie. Teammates, Declan Rice and Mason Mount are Luke's England pals. What do you do after training with the lads? Luke says. We play Uno a lot. If you ask the lads, I think they'd say that I'm the best at it. <laughs> I'm very good at games, though. We play a lot at United, so I've got plenty of experience. What was it like when you first got called up to the England national team? Luke says, Yeah, I was out Southampton and about 18 years old. The manager at the time, Mauricio Pochettino, pulled me into his office and I thought, What have I done now? And they told me, thought he was joking, so I rang my mum and there were tears. It was a special feeling. If you could pick one player from another country to play for England, who it would be? Luke says, I'd say Paul Pogba. When he's at his best, he's the best midfielder in the world. Everyone would love him here. His vibes are 100. He's a funny, a good guy, a leader. He'd bring a good mentality. I've trained with a lot of players and he's just unbelievable. Who is your England hero? Luke says, I'd say Ashley Cole in my position, but I love David Beckham too. Beck's free kick in the top bins against Greece was beautiful. I also think Wayne Rooney. I watched a documentary about his career and never realised how good and important he was, especially when he was a youngster. He was unbelievable. Lastly, do you think King will win the World Cup? Luke says, yeah, of course. You have to believe that you can win it. We don't want to come across arrogant, but there's a very special feeling that we could do something special. We felt that other, the Euros, maybe we could have done a few things different in the final. But we honestly believe that we can win the World Cup. It's coming home. Black Stenius for Arsenal. New signing for Arsenal in the Women's League and Arsenal in the FA Cup semi-finals against Chelsea. Very close game, first versus second in the league. Chelsea one point in front of Arsenal currently, at the time of filming this. Arsenal on 43 points. Blackstenius though, great player for Arsenal. She says she's really enjoying Arsenal as a football club. I believe they're still in the Champions League, or they might have gotten knocked out by Wolfsburg. But again, a very good setup for Arsenal. They could probably win the treble, hopefully. Maybe even the Premier League, FA Cup. Maybe the Champions League is still in it, which I'm not really sure about. Galton, Manchester United. Midfielder, thinks she scored about six goals, eight assists this season. Manchester United are third, fourth. Manchester City, United having a battle for that top four spot. Galton, well... Playing a lot for United and frequently on the bench. Because, I mean, Man United have got a superb team. I think they're still in the FA Cup. I think they're in the semi-finals of it. It's going to be a very close FA Cup. Chelsea, Arsenal, one of them. And I think Man United versus someone else. But, yeah, United, third, fourth place in the WCL. Ninety second quiz. You got ninety seconds to tackle Footy's greatest quiz. I think so. We did this last time, and I think I just about failed to do it. I think it was ninety five seconds, or failed by five seconds, which isn't the greatest thing. But let's get right into it. In three, two, one. One. When did Man United last win the Champions League? Two thousand six. Two thousand eight. 2016, 2020, 2008. Two, which of these clubs has James Milner not played for? City, Aston Villa, Liverpool, Chelsea. Never played for Chelsea. Three, Robert Lewandowski signed for Bayern Munich from which Bundesliga club? Borussia Mönchengladbach, Bayer Leverkusen, Borussia Dortmund and Frankfurt. Dortmund. Four, which of these is Barcelona alleged Dani Alves? A, B, C or D? B. 
Come on, Dan. Five, who's played the most games for Man City? Kevin De Bruyne, Raheem Sterling, Ruben Diaz, Fernandinho, Fernandinho. Six, which of these trophies has Tony Cruz never won? World Cup, European Championship, Champions League, La Liga. European Championship. Seven, which Prem clubs has these four balls all played for? Everton, Liverpool, Tottenham, Leicester. Everton, Lukaku, Barkley, Stones, Dinia, eight. Eight, Chelsea, goal machine, Sam Kerplis, which of these countries? Australia, New Zealand, England, India, Australia. Nine, who won the championship in 2020-21? to Watford, Norwich, Brentford, Fulham. Norwich. Ten, last question, who finishes England's top scorer at Euro 2020? Raheem Sterling, John Henderson, Luke Shaw, Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Time up. Hopefully we did that in under 90 seconds. Second time, lucky. Now see if I've got all of them right. One is B. Two is D. Correct. Three is C. Correct. Four is B. Correct. Five is D. Correct. Six is B. Correct. Seven is A. Correct. Eight is A. Correct. Nine is B. Correct. Ten is D. Ten out of ten. On the genius again. The world of women's footy. Your go-to guide to the beautiful game. Superstina. The Gunners new star. Lots of top ballers moved to the WCL in the winter transfer window, but few had the impact of Arsenal's Stina Blacksteiners. She netted twice against Brighton, once against Reading, and grabbed a late winner against Man United. Fact file. Learn about the new Gunners hero. Age 26, position forward, country Sweden, caps, slash goals, 74, 23. Did you know, Stina's goals helped Sweden finish third at the 2019 World Cup and bag silver at the Olympics last year. Invincible Barca. Barcelona have won every league game this season. Here's some of the Spanish champions' best wins. Barca 8, Valencia 0, 25th of September 21. Barca 9, Alaves 1. 2nd of October 21. Sevilla 1, Barca 10. 20th of November 21. Sociedad 1, Barca 9. 9th of February 22. Barca 5, Real Madrid 0. 13th of March 22. Lots of crazy results in the WCL. Arsenal and Chelsea absolutely destroying it. I think Chelsea won like 10 0 against Leicester. Arsenal think beat Birmingham about 8-0. And England national team, I think it was 21-0 to England against Lithuania. So, what? FA Cup crunch time. We're down to the semi-finals in the FA Cup. But who will snatch a trophy? Time for you to predict for us. Semi-final one, West Ham versus Man City. Well, Man United never made it. I was wrong there. The winner of this will be Man City. I'll even predict the score. Three. Nah, five. One. City. Semi final two. Arsenal versus Chelsea. Winner, Chelsea. Score. One. One. Extra time. Two one to Chelsea. Final winner. I've got to be a biased Chelsea fan and say Chelsea. And I'll say 2 0. On the road, the Lionesses are on the road this month as a fight to get to the World Cup. Give your POTM a rating out of 10. North Macedonia, England, Tosse Proso Arena, Friday 8th of April, 7 pm. These games have been played, and I believe this one was about 15 0. To England and the player of the match was Beth Mead who scored four goals in that game and played amazing. Probably got about three assists as well. Beth Mead got man of the match there. Uh, ten out of ten that performance. Northern Ireland versus England. Windsor Park. Tuesday, twelfth of April, seven pm. Player of the match. I believe this one was eight on nine now. And I'd say mm, Millie Bright. 
centre back. Also played very well. The performance for them, 10 out of 10. Club Focus, number two, Brighton, nicknamed the Seagulls, founded in 1991, 31 years ago. Stadium, Broadfield Stadium, Crawley. Manager, Hope Powell, Captain Danielle Bowman, 2021-22 top scorer, Kayleigh Green, four goals. Baller, skills, tips and tricks from MOTV mag expert Stobsey. Champions League wants to watch. The player, Pau Torres. Quarterfinal 1, Bayern Munich v Villarreal. 12th of April, 8pm. In this game, Villarreal, with Unai Emery's superb tactics, they knocked out Bayern Munich. 2-1 on aggregate. And they're in the semi-finals against... Ooh, it was Man City versus Real Madrid in one semi-final. And then in the other one, it was Villarreal versus Liverpool. So Liverpool probably have an easy draw, but Villarreal will give them a very hard game. Paul Torres, Club Villarreal, age 25, country Spain, position centre-back. Look out for his long passes. Last season, Paul played more long-range passes with within his own half than any other league defender. With 52, the lesson. Next time you're at the back... Take risks and play brave balls into your midfield and forwards. Focus on your quality though. The player. Vinicius Junior. Club Real Madrid. Age 21. Country Brazil. Position forward. Look out for his fearless flair. When VG is faced with defenders, he doesn't just pass the ball off to safety. He activates his inner street baller and directly dribbles at them. Trying any skill he can to get past them. The lesson. Be brave to bust out tricks you've learned in the playground. Quarterfinal 2, Real Madrid vs Chelsea, 12th of April, 8pm. Very disappointed as a Chelsea fan, because we just about got knocked out by Real Madrid. We lost 3-1 in the first leg with a Benzema masterclass. Second leg, we are winning 3-0, Mount in the 15th minute, Rudiger in the 51st minute, Alonso's goal disallowed in the 63rd or 64th minute, and Werner scoring in the 75th minute. 3-0 in the 80th minute. We thought we were through. 4-3 on aggregate. Until Rodrigo, the substitute, scored in the 80th minute to break our heart. 4-4. And then extra time in the 96th minute. Rudiger slips. Benzema scores. And we're out of the Champions League. 5-4 on aggregate. Disappointing that even though where everyone, when everyone has actually scored the goals... But Vinicius Jr. played a massive part in Real Madrid's victory. Well, they never won the game, but the tie. The player, Jeffrey Kondogbia, Club Atletico Madrid, age 29, country Central African Republic, position midfielder. Look out for his leadership. He might not have the armband. Big Jeff is the enforcer of Atletico's team. He crunches into tackles, goes into an intercept, and is always highest up for headers. Lesson, set the tempo in midfield by having high energy to win the ball back. Quarter-final three, Lake Madrid versus Man City, 13th of April, 8pm. Nil-nil that game ended, Man City win 1-0 from the other game where the Bruyne, the Bruyne scored the winning goal, Phil Foden with the assist. A big fight happened though right at the end, seeing Felipe getting red-carded, and I don't know how Stefan Savage never got red carded. I'm very surprised of that. The player, Darwin Nunes. Club Benfica, age 22, country Uruguay, position striker. Look out for his shooting range. Nunes loves to shoot, whether it's on the dribble, first time from cutbacks, set pieces, solo runs or picking up defensive errors. He has great improvisation to pop one off. Lesson. Practice your shooting from a range of different scenarios to gain confidence. Quarterfinal 4, Liverpool vs Benfica, 13th of April, 8pm. I'll be honest, I'm not being biased, but Benfica deserved to get to the semi-finals with how they played. They got four goals chalked off for offsides or handball. But if that never happened, they would have won 7-3 in that game alone. 
and Liverpool would have been knocked out. It would have been 8-6 on aggregate. That's how unbelievable that game was. Liverpool, great game. It was 3-3 in the end. Superb game. It could have been 8-6. I mean, if all if all them goals were allowed, like Darwin Nunes scored a hat-trick in that game. Don't, not the goal he actually scored, but three of his goals were offside. He could have got four goals in that game alone. Well done, Liverpool, though, against Villarreal. Another poster, Gelt Hart for Leeds, number 30. The young 19-year-old is living the dream. Whenever he plays, he has scored crucial goals. He scored against Chelsea to make it 2-2. Then Chelsea got a 3-2 win in the end. Gelt Hart as well scored the winner. Can't believe, can't remember who it was against, but he scored the winner in a game. This guy's just living the dream. Gelt Hart seems like such... A massive talent. He's scoring goals and he's barely played for the team. And he's such a threat all of the time. Seems like a great one for the future. Man City versus Liverpool rankings. Who are the great and not so great from the Prem's top two? Time to find out. Hmm, let's start from amateur tier. Scott Carson, Adrian, Nathan Ake. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. The only reason I like Scott Carson is because he came from Carlisle. Carlisle United player, so superb. I think he played for work in as well. Semi-professional tier. Divock Origi, John Stones, Naby Keita, Gabriel Jesus, James Milner. Professional tier. Jack Grealish, Andy Robertson, Phil Foden, Diogo Jota, Riyad Mahrez. World-class tier. Virgil van Dijk, Bernardo Silva, Trent, Yao Cancelo, Mane. Elite here, Salah and De Bruyne. I would agree. Would you rather grab a mate and tackle these six huge footballing dilemmas? Well, I don't have a mate with me right now, so I have to do it on my own. Number one, be a five-star skiller, have a five-star weak foot. Have a five-star weak foot, and I'll tell you why. When you're playing against a defender that knows that you're right-footed and you've got a left foot, they don't know what side to show you to go. You could shoot with your left foot from anywhere. They could shoot with your right foot from anywhere. They're not going to expect anything. And they're going to be scared of you because you could use both feet as the same as each other, eloquently. And it's going to be hard for them to defend against you. Two, have a panel match against Batman or have a penalty shootout against Spider-Man. Have a penalty shootout against Spider-Man. He might save everything, but who said he's going to score everything? I mean, the ball's going to get stuck to his hand when he when he gets a web on the ball. So no, I'm having a penalty shootout against Spider-Man. Number three, a dance battle of Gunnosaurus or a karaoke sesh with Declan Rice. Let's have a dance battle of the Gunnosaurus. It's going to be very fun. This is going to be a hard one for number four. Where the Ronaldo R9 haircut for a month or rock the teamy pookie look for a year. I'd like the R9 haircut rather than the teamy pookie look for a year. I mean, it's only for a month. What could possibly happen? Five, have Ellen White join your club for a season or your club play in the WCL for a season. Have... Ellen White, join your club for a season. The last one. You have to play in Crocs for a month or have to play in a fancy dress for a season? Have to play in a fancy dress for a season. Does that mean trainings? Well, I, for a month as well, that's about three or four weeks. And that's three or four games. So I guess that'll be all right. And then for a season, yeah, I'll change it. I'll change it to Crocs for a month because you're playing three or four games, three, four weeks at least.
that is the end of another Match of the Day magazine video. I really hope you enjoyed this video like I did. I really enjoyed making this for you guys. Comment down below who is the best striker in the world right now. Well, you've seen my pick, Robert Lewandowski. Who is yours? Tell me. And also, who is the best striker of all time? For me, it's a very hard one. But Cristiano Ronaldo of all time. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thank <music> you.